Okay, team, so today I'm going to teach you how to build a garden in a crate. Hermione's going to help. All right, so you're going to need some kind of fabric. I chose to buy weed blocker because it's like got a really fine mesh, so it's going to hold a lot of my soil particles, but also allow water to drain. Um, before, I just use like whatever kind of scrap fabric I had around. So really just needs to yeah hold the soil and be able to drain. Um, you're gonna need a staple gun and I just discovered this little trick. I never read manuals but you should <laughs> I guess because you um, but it has a little dial so if I press that little dial I can line it up with my edge and I'll show you that later. Um, a piece of chalk is very thick. A stapler probably be handier to have a big size one but I don't a pair of scissors and a pair of needle nose pliers and of course a le crate. I'll mention that the sturdier milk crates work much better than the sort of file folder holding ones. They're a little flimsier but you can still do it. All right so you're gonna lay out your fabric and then try to center the crate so that it is um, going to line up with the width and I'll show you what that means in a second. Okay, so I got my crate centered and then I'm going to test out to make sure that it's going to fit the width of my fabric, which it just barely does. It would be nice if it was a little wider. Um, and actually I just moved it here, but I do know I've already done it with a couple, so I know it lines up just barely. All right, then I'm gonna put it back in the middle. Also make sure it lines up with a little overhang, maybe an inch or two on either of the other sides. You're gonna take your chalk and line the outside of the crate on all sides. Buddy is now helping as well. Got all four sides lined. Then I'm going to carefully flip so it's in the same position. And then I'm going to trace the outside lines here as well. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's all done. Okay, so then I have my chalk line and I have a dash line for where I'm going to cut and that left just a little um, edge from the edge of the crate to a little overlap. All right, now I'm going to cut my fabric. I need both hands, so I'll show you what it looks like. When it's done. The only cut I'm going to make is that one right along the edge there. Okay, so some people are really spatially oriented and they just get how to put a piece of fabric in a crate. And some people also just don't necessarily care about being really efficient with space uh, or materials, so maybe they'll just cut a square that might kind of, and they just shove it in there and staple it on the sides. We're gonna be nice and official and make these look really good and last a long time. Um, so the chalk lines are really just to show you where you're going to fold the extra, the seams in. And then the chalk lines will line up and that's where you staple. Just I just put two staples along each just to hold it kind of in place. So as, yeah, as a guy. Yeah. One kind of towards the corner and then I'll line that up again and staple one down there. And then the fold is not like bunched in and stapled. It's it's like actually um, kind of loose and overhanging here. And it'll get tucked into the crate when I am ready to staple the whole thing together. Hi, Joe. So while you're doing this, you kind of want to make sure that this edge, this corner stays. You don't want to like pull it and then over staple here because you won't have enough room to do the whole thing. So I just kind of wanted to show you how I'm folding. I'm doing the opposite corner that I just stapled. I kind of pull it out and then I poke down the middle so it kind of gets a little crease there. And then I sort of tuck that under and I tuck it to one side. Okay, once you have all four sides seams stapled, flip your crate back over. And then you're gonna want chalk side in. So you actually kind of have to reverse your fabric and then drape it inside the crate. 
folded sides um, towards the inside of the crate. I'm going to staple it around the edges. And I'll show you how to do that. Motley is also helping. Everyone is helping today. All right, so I have folded, so I put all this seam. I like to, um, <laughs> I like to fold them so that they're all going like counterclockwise around the crate so that way I don't have like two seams folding in to each other. I don't know, just to make it like a little bit nicer. And then I'm actually folding over the extra fabric here neatly um, and then I, I'm going to staple it to this edge. And notice that like this crate is a little bit bigger than a normal one and so I don't have a lot to fold over on this edge which is kind of a bummer. You, you really want that for sturdiness and so it doesn't put as much stress on the fabric uh, which Four will cause staples it to like break. per side is good. Two towards the corners and then two spaced out in the middle. Um, and then I just want to remind you of this handy little guidance tool on the stable gun so there it, it's no nope not there and then oh yeah there it is um which allows me to place that edge on the edge of the crate um, and then i really push down on the stable gun i'll use both hands to make sure that it actually lodges into the edge of the crate because it's a really thin little slice of crate that you're trying to staple so it can be kind of tricky right stapled into place um, the final step of this is to, um, you don't really have to do this, I just feel like it's kind of a nice safety thing to them stab themselves. Uh, you take some needle nose pliers and um, you're gonna, I started bending these outwards but I actually realized it's better just bend them inwards like a normal staple would be. Um, and then sometimes when you push on it, it does come up. Uh, off the top so you kind of have to be careful of that and the nice thing about using the guide on the staple gun is that all these staples are really close to the inner edge of the crate and not like sticking out on the outer edge so they're already kind of hard to get your finger in but yeah I'm gonna go through and bend all those staples oh, inwards oh hello little spider are you here to catch the pests in my future garden thank you Voila, a garden in a crate. And these are super portable, so you can move them to wherever you get the most sun. Most vegetable gardens need six to eight hours of full sun a day, which we don't get very much of here because of all of the trees, which is why I put them all on the sunniest spot, the very back of the porch. And now you know how to build a garden in a crate. The end.